I'm just going to get it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these still aren't ready. No. I think the ones higher up are more ripe. Higher up? Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. I'm gonna juggle it. <laughs> Come on. I love the fact that we have our own oranges, but at the moment, oranges is all that we can harvest. Personally, one thing that I was really excited about when we decided to come to Portugal was the prospect of being able to grow our own fresh fruit and vegetables. And I'm pretty sure you were even more excited about it than I was. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. I'm not very talented yet in the garden, but I'm very enthusiastic. Yeah, you are the green fingered one out of the pair of us. <laughs> Maybe. The problem at the moment though, at this time of year, is that we still have a lot of frosts uh, and very cold nights. Mm. So it's not suitable to plant things outside yet. But hopefully today. It's all gonna change. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> oh. So, if you haven't already guessed what our plan is for today, this is the location for our new greenhouse. greenhouse. <laughs> now, this is a flat packed greenhouse that we've had delivered to us so we are fully expecting it to be a challenge let the fun begin <laughs> These instructions are outrageous. I panicked when I first opened it because I thought it was all in German, yeah. but look, looking through, there is an English section, but the English isn't about how you actually build it. The English is just about safety concerns, maintenance, things yeah. like that. The actual instructions, look at this list of components. There's one, two, three, four. It's about nine pages just listing the parts that are in it. <laughs> but no instruction about how they go together. <laughs> no, it's just diagrams. I've got a feeling today uh, <laughs> might be a wee bit frustrating. I think this is going to be a test of our relationship. <laughs> yeah, I think we might be right. I think regular breaks are going to be uh, paramount to today's success. Bitte in die Anleitung, da steht, wie man ein vernünftiges Fundament aus Beton gießt. Warum? Und, um We're just watching an instructional video because looking through these, I mean, it's so complicated. We bought a German greenhouse because you think German engineering, like this is going to be well built. And hopefully that's the case, but it also means the video instructions are in German. So we're reading it in subtitles. So I don't really know how much easier it's making it. Shall we just start and figure it out as we go along? Then that's a good idea. We've just laid out all of the parts because there are so many. It goes from one to 63 and there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it so i think laying it out all in numerical order is prudent just to make our lives easier because otherwise we're going to spend forever searching for the numbers because they've only got these tiny little stickers on to indicate what the number is according to this oh, oh dear we've got 166 nuts and 167 bolts so i don't know what the extra one there is for So let me tell you, this is a big test in patience because the instructions just don't tell you anything. We're basing everything off of pictures, which way around it needs to be. So quite a few times we've had to do things up, then take it apart. And we're at that point again now, because what it didn't tell you was that there's a part where the bolt 
slides down a channel to then go behind all the pieces and then you put the nut between three different pieces. <sighs> I'm not following you, so I don't know how they will. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> taken a while but that's one side <laughs> down at least where one of the gable ends is is done yeah we were a bit skeptical as it was lying on the floor it looked really dinky and weren't sure if he was actually going to be able to fit in it but yeah i mean we knew it was going to be short because in the in the measurements it said it's 195 centimeters tall obviously i'm six foot two so it's a bit of a squeeze i can only just get through the apex but i think we might have to raise it off the ground a little bit just to give a bit of extra head height yeah could be a good idea mm. right i think that's the perfect time to go and get a coffee because i'm feeling exhausted and i definitely need it to get on with the rest of the day do you want a coffee victoria love one affirmative let's go and get it and while the kettle's boiling let us tell you about the sponsor of today's video surfshark Surfshark is a virtual private network or VPN that encrypts all of your private information anytime you go online, keeping you safe and protected from anyone who's trying to get their dirty little paws on your information. One of the best features for us is the ability to change your device's IP address to one in another country, and we've used it pretty much every single day since we've moved to Portugal. After a long day working on the farm, we love to curl up with the dogs and stream our favorite TV shows, and that includes shows from back home in the UK that aren't available in Portugal. We simply connect to one of their UK-based servers, and hey presto, we can watch the same TV shows as our friends and family back home. Recently, we've been catching up on the latest series of the doghouse on channel 4 Teddy and Poppy love it too we also have to thank Surfshark for saving us money on flight tickets did you know that certain airlines and booking websites adjust the price depending on which country you're searching from with Surfshark you can easily search for the best deals in other countries and then purchase at the best price saving you money on your flight and giving you more money for your trip win-win and with one account, you can protect unlimited devices so every member of the family can stay safe when they're online. Click the link below in the description to receive a whopping 83% discount plus a further three months completely free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. It's time for us to get this caffeine in us <laughs> and get back to work. Okay, so we need two ones. Two, three, two thirteens, which are the brackets. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> two, on. three. Two, three. So we've got two ones, two, three. three. Yeah. Sixty-two. Oops. Yeah, so I think it's that. That's facing this way. Yep. That's the inside edge. And then this. So which is the inside edge? Here. Okay. And then this goes like that. Well, that 
that was much easier the second time round. This is now the front end where the door is gonna be. And I think it's kind of like, once you understand the language of like how they've written the instructions. The method in the madness. Oh yeah, it's like you can <laughs> then kind of predict like, oh actually that's what they mean. So yeah. we've whipped this together a bit more quickly. Whipped it. <laughs> yeah, well whipped it. It wasn't bad. The last one took us about two hours and this one took us half the time. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So we've still got the sides to make, but we're actually gonna put them on hold for a minute and we're gonna skip forward and make the base. We're kind of doing this build in a bit of a weird order. Uh, we do want to make a foundation. We're going to have a concrete foundation that's going to go around the rim and underneath the base. But because the instructions on this were like pretty vague and we weren't really sure what size that foundation would need to be, we thought if we can make it first and then we can view it for ourselves, we can work out what fixings we need to attach it to the concrete. So daylight is disappearing fast so we are going to jump in make the base and that will then allow us to see the actual footprint we can work out the sides of our foundation and then this evening i can hop into the city stock up on cement and get the fixings we need to get it nice and secure are they identical yeah, yeah. So we got about three quarters of the way through making this base, but annoyingly we're now having to take it apart. However, it was a worthwhile exercise because in doing this, it showed us that this won't actually work, putting this base as it is on a concrete slab. So this base has these legs and kind of what this base is actually meant to do is designed to be in the ground. So it would sit like that and this leg here would go into the ground and then the top of the greenhouse would be tied to this with a bolt. However, because we want this to go on a slab, this is gonna be in the way. We thought about could we flip it upside down, but that doesn't work with the greenhouse on top of it. So what we are going to do is chop this bracket down to make it level and flush. We're then gonna put some holes through the bottom of this base and bolt this to the concrete base. That's the plan and yeah, I'm confident that it's going to work. Quietly confident that it's going to work. So we've just finished cutting the wood to make all the forms for the concrete. Because the way we're doing it, we need to do an outer form and an inner form because the foundation is going to be about 20 centimeters wide. So that's everything cut. Now it's time to piece it together.
Right, so we've just been jiggling the form around and trying to just find where the right place for it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we've got the perfect spot. Yeah, I do too. So one thing is the ground is incredibly uneven in this position and we're on a bit of a hill and it's kind of sloping everywhere. So Victoria is going to nip back with the dogs, make some lunch. I'm going to map this out and attempt to dig out as much as I can before filling my belly with lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I love this tool. It just makes such light work of jobs like this. Now it's time to get the spade, shovel it all out. beat after doing that. Look at the size of this pile. So much more dirt came out than I thought it was going to, but all I've done so far is roughly dig out. We know that we want the foundation to sit 60 mil below the ground, and then we're gonna have 60 mil above. Obviously, once I've leveled it out, certain areas are gonna be more than that. But for now, I've just roughly done it by eye. I'm gonna go refuel, get some food in me, and then I'll come back out check the levels and we'll level it off properly. All that threw a spanner in the works. One of our neighbors needed a hand with something and what was meant to be a 10 minute job turned into just under two hours. But just before we had that disturbance anyway, we were trying to calculate the level that we need to get everything to. And frustratingly, we've discovered that actually the amount of dugout is too much. We initially planned for it to be 60 mil, but because of the lay of the land and it's on such a slope, that won't actually fit. We need to raise it higher. So I need to now fill some of it back into the hole, level that out, and then we'll get the form and everything set up ready to hopefully lay some concrete tomorrow.
We've had a rotten morning today. It's been so wet and windy and our original plan was to pour the concrete this afternoon but that's actually gone out of the window because we're expecting even more rain this evening. But Ricky did brave the weather this morning and come out and finish levelling the foundation. So Ricky, what do you call the ground? The ground? I don't know what you mean. He's finished levelling the ground where we're going to put the foundation and now we're going to crack back on building the frame for the greenhouse and see where we get to. Maybe it'll be clearer when we've actually got the parts in front of us. So it's the L bracket. Is it this one? 37. Okay. Here. Looking at. So we've got 53. Oh no, that's still on this roof. Okay. So 53, we've got two of them. And, Show then, me again. and then we need two. We've already, that's those flat ones. Okay. Where did you put them? I put them back in the bag. No, I, I said we need two of them. Okay, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then we need two. <laughs> <laughs> we need two 54s. <laughs> Tell me what shape Yeah, it is. hang on. I've got to go back to another page. This is quite possibly the most complicated bit of flat pack that I have ever built. I know it's not a competition but if it were I'd be winning. I set yours up. No you didn't. I did. No. Then you went, I did. No. That's exactly you what happened. You gave me a five minute head start maximum. Set, maximum. Set all your bits up. Giggity. You might be wondering why we're actually going to all this trouble to build a greenhouse. Well, we actually eat absolutely loads of salad and vegetables and fruit every day. I think, Something oh no. dear, <laughs> man overboard. Yeah. Our hope is that, or not our hope, our plan is that we're gonna grow a lot of tomatoes, salad, for as many months of the year as possible. And spinach, we eat so much spinach. We do. <laughs> and also broccoli, that's one thing that I really wanna grow. They're really tricky though. I think we can do it. I hope we can do it because <laughs> my like infamous dish that Victoria loves eating. And my favourite. <laughs> has lots of broccoli in. It's like a sticky tofu broccoli dish with rice, caramelised, soy. Can start there? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Right, here we go. Time for the big erection. <laughs> We're both a bit nervous about this because the walls are a bit flimsy and we've got to try and prop them up and screw them. Also, we've only got about an hour of daylight left, so let's see if we can get it done. The next morning, the sun was shining. It was so crisp and still, just such a beautiful winter's morning. So I decided today would be the perfect day for concreting. And I came down armed with the landscaping fabric and started to lay that out because we don't want any weeds coming up inside of the greenhouse, nor do we want it going around the edge where there's gonna be gravel. I snagged Victoria away from work for five minutes to help me bring the biggest part of the form down because it was just impossible to try and carry that by myself. I then maneuvered it into place and measured to make sure it was equidistant and tried to check the levels to make sure they were correct. I made some adjustments, but I found that it was actually quite difficult to get this level with the landscaping fabric down. So I still had to make some adjustments with a trowel to dig some of the earth out. I then brought down the inner part of the form, which I could manage by myself and laid that down. But in doing this, I quickly found out that it was very lumpy in the middle. I then had to remove the landscape fabric, remove the inner part of the form and dig some out, make the adjustments and then lay it all back down, which to be honest was a real faff, but was essential to make sure that both parts of the form were level. 
I then re-measured to make sure that the size of the form was the 20 centimeter width all the way around and making sure that both parts of the form were level to each other. I then cut some holes in the landscaping fabric and proceeded to put stakes all the way around both the inside of the inner form and the outside of the outer form just to try and reduce any bulges that might happen once the concrete is inside. I thought it would be a good idea to get some gravel and just lay down a really thin layer. I thought it would give a nice base to the concrete as well as block up any tiny gaps between the form and the landscaping fabric. Right, so about ready to pour now. Uh, I just thought I'd explain because I don't think I've said this so far, but this foundation is only really to help give something nice and even for the greenhouse to fix to. We also get quite high winds here and neither of us felt particularly secure just fixing this to the ground, even though that's what the plans say, but we just felt a bit more comfortable having a base. And the reason we've got it the depth we have of about 120 mil is simply because we had that wood for another project and we're just thinking we can use it now and then we can reuse it again. So trying to think economically because wood at the moment is pricey. Okay, so that's the first mix down, looking good. I've got all the air bubbles out of it, it's looking nice and smooth. As per usual, it's getting towards the end of the day and I am racing against the light. So I'm gonna press on. I estimate it's gonna take about eight batches, eight mixes, I think. So we'll see how it goes. Well, this got stressful quickly. I'm really struggling here with the time. I've got maybe two thirds of the way, but I haven't smoothed off part of it yet. Feeling a little bit silly right now, if I'm being honest, because my gut was telling me before I started, you're starting later on in the day than you planned. Have you got time? I was really questioning it and I just thought, no, I'll be able to get it done and I pressed on anyway. So let that be a lesson. If your gut says to you, you don't think you've got time, trust it, sit it out, wait until tomorrow because now I'm probably going to end up finishing this in the dark so yeah I'm probably going to put the camera down carry on I'll pick you back up and show you where I got to tomorrow good morning if you can't tell by my voice and demeanor <laughs> I am beat today that was an experience and a half doing that last night Victoria finished work at about six o'clock it was really dark and yeah being the trooper she is she came out and she joined me for about an hour and a half holding a torch so I could carry on working in the dark far from ideal circumstances <laughs> and at the moment I've not actually looked at what this looks like so now we've got some daylight on it I'm gonna go and have a look there was a moment of panic uh, towards the very end because I had some cement left over from a previous job about a bag and a half and I checked it about three weeks ago and it was fine so I never checked it again before I started this job and anyway we used up all the cement that I bought recently and I thought oh, I'm gonna have to go back and grab that cement from last time well both of the bags had gone off and was rock solid and there was a panic thinking we weren't gonna have enough to finish it luckily we managed to just about scrape enough to get it done but yeah you know smoothing that out under torch light really really was not ideal it looked okay when we left it under the torch, but if in broad daylight, this job is absolutely horrendous, this clip will not be making the final video. <laughs> Maybe I'll just destroy the whole thing. You'll never see this concrete base be built. So there's a cement mixer abandoned because it was so dark when I was cleaning it. And here we go. It doesn't actually, doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect. 
and I can see the wood is bowing in a few places. We suspected it might bow a little bit just because the wood we're using for the form isn't that thick. It's only 15 mil. You know, if money was no object, I probably would have bought thicker, deeper wood to use as a form, but at this moment in time, I really don't want to go and spend 100 euros plus on wood just to make a form for this. We just didn't see the value. And at least this way, we're going to reuse this wood because we have something else we want to use it for. We're just going to plane it down and sand it. And I think it will be OK. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm looking around the edges and where I've smoothed it over the edge of the form. I think I'm just going to neaten it up and try and cut that back a little bit there just so when we remove the form it doesn't break away any of the edges but yeah i'm going to give it a bit of a spray down with water just to try and slow down the curing process circumstances considered you know i don't think this is too shabby right so i've just finished cleaning it all up and i was thinking a few things whilst i was doing it of you know what went wrong what could i do better next time because this is the first time that i've just laid any type of concrete foundation or slab whatever you want to call it and I think my biggest observations would be <laughs> give yourself plenty of time that would be the most important one also just make sure that you use really really strong wood for the form and I think even in our instance where we didn't use the biggest thickest wood for the form I think if we would have put more stakes in the ground to support that form when it wants to push out i think that would have kept it straight so yeah hopefully if you're going to do something like this yourself you can learn from my mistakes but even with the mistakes you know i'm pretty happy with this like i say it's not structural it's only to provide a flat base for the greenhouse to sit on so it's going to do the job perfectly all right so what's next painting and then panels panels yeah and gravel in the base and removing yeah. the form <laughs> and fixing the base <laughs> to the concrete. Yeah, we're about halfway. I don't think we said this previously, but we really wanted a black or a darker colored frame on the greenhouse to match the gates. And we just think it looks a bit more... Primo. Yeah, primo, yeah, premium. <laughs> um, but we just couldn't find one that we liked. So we bought this aluminum natural metal colored frame, and then we're just gonna paint it ourselves. So we got a nice anthracite color. So yeah, there's still a lot left to do on this project and the plan was to just continue with it over the next few days and just mm. keep going until we got it done. However, the weather <laughs> seems to be taking a bit of a turn according to the forecast and we're due a load of storms. The wind's really picking up today as well. So I think despite the blue skies, I think it's deceptive. I do think the bad weather is just around the corner. So we'll have to see what we can hop onto. So in case you haven't already guessed, this is going to be the location for our new... Greenhouse! <laughs> <laughs> what was the massive delay for? <laughs>